way through hell. Another one. Find out. One final blast of winter. That's it, we're telling ya. Means one busy night for Al. I'll stay there until we're done. Gord brings out the big guns. There are problems you can solve with a hammer. And the rotator returns to BC. Kind of nice to have my old girl home again. But it might not survive. If something fails, it's catastrophic. The first night home. Ah! On the highway through hell. The last line of defense is a heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because closure is not an option. Kahala Highway in BC. Truckers thought the season was over. He would think it was winter or something, yeah. But winter isn't giving up without a fight. Holy hell, there's no place to park a truck. The late season storm means one more night of work for Al from Quiring Towing. I live my life minute by minute. Especially up here, it's by the second. I'll stay there until we're done. Until there's nothing left to do. <laughs> Just north of the snow shed. Another one, spun out. A spun out semi is blocking the slow lane. If the cars can't make it up here, I was gonna truck make it up here. Traffic will start to bottleneck in minutes, and sand trucks are blocked. They want me to get you out here so they can plow. If you can get going, all the power to you. Otherwise, they want me to hook you on and drag you. So I'll pull ahead here a little bit. If Al doesn't hook up, he doesn't get paid. So have you got chains or not? OK, well, let's go chop, chop, chop. But the lane will be cleared much faster if the driver can get out under his own power. Sometimes you're helping the guy out to get out of there. Other times, you just want him to get the hell out of there because he's causing a problem. You're good to go. With the tire chains in place, Al's giving the driver one shot to get out on his own. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. If they keep, <laughs> it's gonna break some. That's it, we're towing you. Pop in your truck, I'm gonna pull ahead. So the simple little hook on and drag you to the top of the hill and kick you in the butt and send you on your way. All right, friends, good luck. Take care. Have a good day. Thanks for surviving the Coquihalla Highway. <laughs> we had a busy winter. Al and his right-hand man, Gord, tackled some big jobs this season. Amazing what you guys can do. <laughs> but even the smallest ones made a difference. I'm not up there to line my pockets all the time. Slow, slow, slow. You've got to have a touch of good heart. It's OK to help people. OK. Yes, Gord, go ahead. Very well, Just this, this one guy. This season might be over, but Al is ready for the next one. I still got another 40 years left. <laughs> Don't run away, we might need our hero again. Yeah, 10-4. Well, it's warmed up three degrees here in the last two hours. The next morning, 60 miles west of Hope, near Mission, BC. Sun shining, birds are singing. Mission Towing's Jordy DePerrin is on the move. We have a customer that's called us that has an excavator lost a track and fell into a hole. It's not an easy job. 
we're gonna get dirty today. It's 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 a mud hole. <laughs> Goes to a snatch block. Jordy's lead operator, Neil Wakefield, is already on scene, where an important construction project is on hold. Careful, it's kind of nasty in here. <laughs> There's holes everywhere in the ground. The excavator weighs 54,000 pounds, but the suction of the mud will require much more force to pull it free. It's a two record job. There's a lot of resistance to overcome there. We're not bringing it up this bank with one record. Neil's going to pull the machine. Oh. And my other record is going to lift it. So Neil's going to be the winch. The other one's going to be the lift. Can I get some more? Neil runs lines through snatch blocks to increase the pulling power. The snatch block goes to this chain. Oh, OK. We used three snatch blocks per wrecker. You're talking about pulling dead weight out of a hole. Tripling the snatch blocks will multiply each wrecker's pulling power. But even that might not be enough. If we don't lift this, It'll just dig right into the ground. With gravity and mud working against them, Jordy is counting on the excavator's own power to help out. OK, we're going to need some more here. But the excavator is badly compromised. Kick a track off. It's like walking with one leg. There's nothing you can do without, without having a crutch or a cane. It's the same thing with an excavator with the track off. We're hooked to the main housing of the excavator. We've got to lift this whole side and pull at the same time. Neil is rigged through a combination of three snatch blocks, allowing him to pull evenly on two points with a single winch. So we do a controlled single pull by putting snatch block to snatch block. Back again to here, we only use one lever. We have total control when we're pulling. We don't have to go with two different lines. That's good. Okay. Good, right there. Look at it. You get two. That's good. OK, we're good. That's going to mean go. I draw my arm stop, OK? Without the use of the track, Jordy decides to add the excavator's boom into the mix. We're going to use the stump. We're going to have him push that side of his machine up to kind of get it out of the hole. He's going to use that stump to push himself up when we're winching. OK, you ready? Let's go. But the pull of the mud. What's wrong? Is still too much. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Slowly. Good. On a construction site outside of Mission BC. Whoa, whoa, no, 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 no. Back off. The suction of the mud is overpowering Jordy DePerrin's wreckers. It's a battle on our hands, really, with this machine. And even with the excavator pulling on a stump, it's not budging. Yeah, he can see that there. The crew from Mission Towing needs to change the plan. That track is going in, so we need to lift with this. That's what I want him to do is lift it, get it to come up. Yeah. Let him use this corner. OK. Let's back off our lines. Instead of pulling, the excavator will push down on the ground, lifting its damaged side out of the mud. Yeah, he's good. Come right here. We're going to use the bottom of your bucket to lift, OK? Good. OK, now we're down. Perfect. You're just going to take the pressure so that we can pull you. Slow. OK, go. Awesome. Now it needs to pull. OK, slowly. OK. Second line. Just keep doing what you're doing. She's coming out. Real slow. Good. Keep walking. We're almost there. Neil, yeah, that's good. That's it. And he's done. 
came out. We didn't damage anything on the machine. Now, use this bucket on there and drive this thing forward on one. Yeah. Yeah, life is good. That makes life so much easier here. <laughs> <laughs> now, all he has to do is he'll have a company come in, and they'll put the track back on his machine, and he can go right back to work. He says he's not going back in that hole, though. Grateful. <laughs> I'm glad we could help. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Better day now. Absolutely. Every day is different. You wake up in the morning, and you go to work not knowing whether you're going to tow people that are surrounded on the side of the highway or you have a vehicle that's 300 feet down a cliff. It's quite the adventure. Eight hundred miles northeast. So it is clean, it's ready to go. Kelly is taking his brother's baby back home to BC. The rotator is Jamie's flagship. It's taken Alberta by storm. Jamie sent the rotator north last winter to tackle a stubborn wreck. We're getting her. And it's been earning its keep here ever since. We're back. <laughs> With the season ending, the rotator is due for a major overhaul back in Hope trying to get us to the call as fast as possible. But it has one last job just outside of Lac La Biche, if Kelly can find it. So this place we're going to isn't even on the map yet. It's just been built. Uh, it's a trouble with Alberta. They build it so quick, they can't keep the maps up. So it's an adventure. Hi, it's Kelly from Jamie Davis Motor Truck here. We're just coming to pull you guys out. i just passing Lac La Biche West. Okay, we'll keep driving until we find you. Oh, there we go. See the flashing light. Well, we found you. <laughs> we'll get you home. We'll get you home. A garbage truck. Look at these guys. Is off the road and badly stuck. They got it all rigged up already. They just want to get home. And he just missed the gas motor. The worst part about a subdivision, those are lines underground. That means there's a whole bunch of hidden dangers underneath the snow. He missed the optic fiber box and the underground wiring and the natural gas and the water. So yeah, pretty lucky guy today. I was on the driveway and then I tried getting myself out of the, back onto the road and the yard sand slipped over. Yeah. As soon as I tried to straighten her out, the other end fell in. And I was rocking myself back and forth, back and forth. And I nearly had it, but it was off. Yeah, <laughs> you're in there. Yeah. We got these things here going. Yeah, I don't want to go anywhere near that, right? We're going to be dealing with natural gas, water, and optic fiber underground. It's a precision job. Kelly will need to rely on Swampers Gourd and Dam. So we want to bring it straight out, and then if we have to drag them, we can get him to apply all his brakes. We're on ice. So we can pull ahead with the lines hooked up and crank him 90 degrees, and then he's on his way. Okay, bring her up to the tow pin. Oh, come on, baby, come on. Should I jump in there and steer out? Yeah, once we start pulling, ease up off the clutch a little bit, but no throttle. Okay. With utility lines on either side of the truck, Kelly has no margin for error. If you take out a gas line or the electrical infrastructure, you're into a big lawsuit. OK, everybody clear. It may look simple just to winch something out, but you have to line up the recovery vehicle just right to make sure that when you pull on that winch line, that truck's going to come out just perfectly straight. Turn your wheel and follow the line. If you're off even just a little bit, you're going to drag the truck where you don't want it to be. No fuel! No, no fuel! No fuel! Straighten your wheel out. Good. Yep. 
should be good, yeah? Briggs! They win. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Good. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. It's a good job. Out of trouble? Yeah. Yeah. Go home for crap's sake. Oh, no. We still got to do the garbage. Huh? You better stick around. <laughs> Going home, okay. With its final job finished in Alberta, the rotator is also ready to go home. Thanks, Jake and Davis. Have a good night. Drive safe. The next day on BC's Highway 3. Oh, yes. All season tires. Wonderful. <laughs> All season tires are like putting a band-aid on a stab wound. Acquiring towing's Gord Boyd has been cleaning up after last night's freak storm. No one saw it coming, but such is the nature of the mountains. We got a broken down logging truck. And now he's helping a stranded customer. There's no wait a minute. It's they need you. They need you right now. We don't like laying on wet, slushy ground. We bring these with us. Couple of old mud flaps. All the redneck tools. This is a redneck kind of job. Okay. You know, there's one thing I like about this job. There are problems you can solve with a hammer. If not, you get a bigger hammer. We need a big hammer, and we need a smaller hammer. It's hammer time. We have to take out the drive shaft. Because oh. with the engine not running, oil pump's not turning, transmission is not getting lubricated. And it doesn't take very long to literally rip a transmission apart. There we go. One drive shaft. Al taught me that trick. And ever since he taught me that trick, I don't, I don't fear those drive shafts anymore. I just grab the tools I need. Get it out of there. Winter is on the way out, but Gord won't be slowing down. We're busy all year round. I always have work to do. Summer or winter, it doesn't matter. I'm always busy. Just another day at the office, really. This had a lot of battle scars. A few hours later, just after nightfall, Kelly Davis closes in on Hope with his special delivery for the boss. It's time for the tater to come home and get refurbished. Jamie's got to throw some love into her. It's kind of like my battleship's gone out to war and it's fought a battle for two years and it's coming back home again. You know, it's kind of nice to have my old girl home again. It really is. Got the old battle, battleship home, eh? Sorry it up, but she, she built you another province. The rotator is my truck. I have a real soft spot for the rotator. I spent a lot of time and hours designing it. What's the other side of it look like? I heard there's a big scratch on the side now. Ah, uh, it's not bad. Right here. Did you put some paint on it or something? No, it goes white. You know, it's taken taken about two and a half years running that truck out there and growing and all that, and then we're back again. You yeah. know what I mean? We're back to where from square one. Yeah, so this is the right place for this thing. So we'll yeah. get her cleaned up and stuff. This was made for the mountains, right? At 10.45 p.m., just six miles west of Jamie's shop, Kilometer west of Hunter Creek, there's a uh, beach in the ditch. Carnage on the Trans Canada. The call goes out to Jamie's youngest brother, Jason, at Aggressive Towing. Is it westbound or eastbound? And he's calling on Jamie to join the recovery. Okay, wait up. Yep. Jamie just started on the rotator's maintenance. But after months away from the driver's seat, I'm really feeling that I need to get back to my roots and do this job. 
he can't resist taking her back into the fray. Hop in with me, we'll go. Okay, sounds good. I haven't even begun to go over the equipment and the rigging. I'm a little bit rusty. I gotta make sure I get back with the program here. Wow. And this job will leave no room for rust. Holy man. Kind of exciting for me to get back to the truck and the job. It almost oh, makes me uh, cry. On Highway 1 in BC, for the first time in months, Jamie Davis is tackling a recovery in his flagship record. You know, this is kind of the first hurrah for the rotator. We're heading up to do battle here in BC now, so that's kind of cool. It's pretty emotional to get back in your old saddle again. Anybody see that truck in the ditch? Wow. Holy oh, Jack, I've been pretty hard, eh? Holy man. Man, that tree's hammered hard. Oh, yeah. That was a big impact. The B train was transporting grain to a local farm when it drifted onto the left shoulder, lost control, and slammed into the trees, snapping into a jackknife. It's a B train, tractor trailer, with two trailers gone completely off the road, and it's down a slight embankment. And the embankment actually gets deeper and deeper as you follow through to the front of the truck. The fully loaded B train weighs 140,000 pounds. Pretty heavy duty weight, and we've got a bit of a bank here. So getting that trailer back up and out of here without damaging it is going to be a huge deal. The trailers are brand new and haven't been damaged in the accident. Probably worth $175,000 plus. And the pressure's on to make sure we get these out without a scratch. Hey, Robert. Dan will give you a hand setting up signs way back there if you want. Yeah, I will. I want to put here. up phones here first. Sure. OK. At 11.15, Jamie's brother Jason approaches the scene in his rotator. On a loaded trailer, you can't do it by yourself. You need more equipment, more gear. OK, guys. Joined by his right-hand man, Chris Mervin, in a 50-ton, along with Jason's daughter, Tia. This is how we spend family time together, doing a wreck on the side of the freeway. That's kind of normal for our family. I'd say we go backwards. Yep, I'm on board. You might want to hook onto the truck right now. Pick it up go backwards with it and pick it up, just kind of limp it along and see where it goes. And if he needs me in the middle, if you're already in the front. The best bet was because the trailers were loaded to go backwards with them all. Seeing what they've given us to work with here to pull it backwards. You got a tow ring here. Yeah, buddy. It's not very big rebar that they welded on there. For the first phase of the recovery, the plan is for Merv's 50 ton to pull from the rear, with Jason's rotator helping from the side. Jamie will lift the tractor, freeing it from the trees. Gotta go, man. Ed don't want to see his truck in here forever. Jason wants the trailers back on the road well before sunrise. As he's a long-term customer who's been with us for a long time, we wanted to make sure that their trailers got to the delivery for the morning. But it's a long path backwards to the highway for the 140,000-pound B train. Hey, my 7 8 cable is rated for 98,000. So it's still not quite enough. Merv will double up his lines and run them through snatch blocks for more power. Yeah, it gives us increased pull power. It's back to physics, buddy. <laughs> High school. You know, the way that tractor's jackknifed, it should come around like this and follow through. But if it doesn't want to and it ends up digging down like a big spade and digging into the ground, it could really make the pull hard for the other two guys. So if they need a little lift, I'll do that part. Get her wrapped around the axle. Beauty weather. Who ordered the rain? Jamie's already feeling the effects of spending months in the office. Left my rain jacket at the shop because they rushed out. I'm on the job, but I don't have my rain gear. I'm definitely rusty. Take the hook, the blue hook. 
Ready? And his rustiness extends to the rotator. Blue line, free will. Blue, blue, blue. It's been so long since he's used it, eh? <laughs> Swing her over. Let's go. We're going to go under here and just give it a little bit of a lift so that when this thing pulls backwards, it's not going to give us too much drag. OK. The reason we use a strap on this is because the trailers are brand new and we don't want to use chain where it might damage the new trailers. Wrap that strap around so it comes out here into a V. Jamie's crew rigs a strap between the two trailers for Jason to hook onto. We need to make sure we're pulling on multiple points of the wreck. Phil and Dan are going to wrap a strap right around the fifth wheel. Jason will be able to get in here and help pull. That just lessens how much pull we're putting on the back end. So it gives us a little strength here, a little bit here, and make her nice. But at the last minute, Jason has issues with his part in the plan. Why do we got that strap like that? Jason's concerned that pressure from a side winch could damage his client's new trailers. Those grain trailers are completely aluminum. You start getting cross-dress and twisting and stuff, and we don't want that. He's just going to roll it back a bit, see if it rolls. It rolls. Yeah. Jason wants to do a test pull first, with only Merv pulling from the back. I think he should be hooked on here and all doing it at the same time. Very slowly, Merv. I don't agree with what's going on there. I don't want to get into it. We me and him fight every time we go to a job. Merv was putting too much load on the back end of the trailer for the hookup point. Jason's job, it's Jason's call. And the more it rains, the tougher the job is getting. The mud's starting to build up. And that all adds to the pull and the resistance in the pull. Jamie's first rotator job in months is sinking fast. And hopefully that was the right live, man. Just west of Hope, BC, on Highway 1. Boy, somebody's late today. Very slowly, Murph. Jamie and his brother Jason are wrestling a 140,000-pound B train in a torrential downpour. This whole ditch could fill up with water on us. And uh, you know, we could be knee deep in mud and, and water here in no time. Keep an eye on it, Barman. But Chris Mervin's wrecker can't budge the rig. When you're playing with 140,000 pounds in the ditch, I mean, that's a serious amount of weight. I just think we need a little bit more, but. Yeah. Just loosen this big one off, Merv. Jason still won't risk pulling sideways. Put the other line on there, put some, we put a lot more tension on that, right? But he'll reposition one of Merv's lines. It's right around the fifth wheel, we're good there. We changed his pull point to the center of the two trailers, which is a stronger point. Okay, Merv. But Jamie is still convinced Jason should add the power of his own rotator. I would have liked to have seen one, two, three different hookups and three different trucks pulling in different ways. It was putting a lot of load on Merv's truck. Stand clear, you guys. When two brothers get out on a recovery job, he's got his ideas, I've got mine. Lightly, Merv. Yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. A little more on the bar. There it comes, there it comes. Coming back, okay. After a season away from the rotator, it's finally time for Jamie to step in. Nice and easy. With the rig on the move. Good, all good. Jamie lifts the jackknife tractor so it will straighten out as the trailers roll back. The truck is wrapped right around in a jackknife position and right into a tree. The only thing we can do here really is drag this unit back until it unfolds. But the equipment is just as untested as the operator. We'll have a strap that's been out in Alberta, and I haven't even wrapped my head around the gear that's on the truck or what shape it's in. A lot of weight. Shakes. Put too much on her, boy. Everything was coming along really smoothly 
until it became hung up on a big log. That's a rookie move. It's something that shouldn't have happened. I'm at fault for that, period. We throw the truck and me into service and we go out on this job and the straps are worn and used and abused and nobody's replaced them. I've only got another five feet to go here. Let's just use the chain. They re-rig to move the tractor the final few feet. The truck's hung up on the trees. So what we're gonna do now is put a chain on the front end. Is there a pin in the center? Yeah, there's a pin, yeah. And pick up the front of that truck and hopefully bring it up over the trees. Come on, baby. And get it in line so that it can be winched backwards some more. Are we good to go? I think so. While Jamie lifts the tractor, okay. Merv pulls from the back end. More. You're up against the tree now. I'm putting the front bumper. I don't think I hit it yet. Hey, Jamie, hang on. It's the tree, Jamie. The bumper is hung up in the trees. Is it too much for him to pull? Well, it's getting a lot of tension on that, eh? Uh, so if you can bring it around, that would be good. Try to suck it around. Jamie will need to finesse it out. Somebody's going to have to stay and kind of watch that. And he's already made one mistake. One of my biggest fears really is that sitting behind a desk every day makes me feel like I'm losing my touch. Okay, Jamie. Westbound on Highway 1, please stay in the Hammer Lane. The rain is pounding on Highway 1 in BC. Okay, Jamie. And a rusty Jamie is trying to free a mangled trailer from the grip of the tree. That's it, yeah. Keep coming. Yeah, bring it around. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's what we need. I think that tree's holding it. Yeah, you're right there. You're okay. Keep coming. Yeah, that's it. That's a big difference. Perfect. Oh, beautiful. And it really feels good to be kind of back in the old saddle again. You become one with the machine, you know? With the rig straightened out, they'll try to pull all 140,000 pounds backwards onto the road. We're going to need your truck. Like, this is heavy weight. I can turn around and hook onto that strap. And this time, it's safe for Jason to pull from the side with his rotator. So with Jamie having the truck being straight, resistance is quite a bit less. So less cross stress. Jason's customer needs the cargo of grain to make its morning delivery. And it's already after 2 a.m. We have till 5 to complete the task. I got to get this job done. OK, watch the line. That's it. Whack. Hang on. As we're winching back, the mud's starting to build up. It's, it's just like a bulldozer's blade where you're pushing the mud. This big mess here, if we don't lift over top of it, we're gonna end up dragging and putting too much stress on the trailer. We're gonna get a spreader bar set up and we're gonna put a strap right in here and we're gonna lift this up and, and you know just kind of float along with it while they're winching backwards. Spreader bars allow Jamie to lift the trailer by applying force to the bottom keeping pressure away from the fragile walls. Just run it through that ring. Yep. A spreader bar is helping to take the pressure off when you do a lift. So you're not collapsing the top end of the trailer rim. That's what it does. Take a shackle under there and then put one end of the strap in. It'll take extra time to set up. But even in the miserable conditions, Jamie's right where he wants to be. Been through a pretty tough year with all the changes and growth. I'm really quite happy to just be doing what I like to do. Take it across the other side and underneath, right about here. Gotcha! <sighs> all right, clear out! <sighs> My gloves are so wet, I can't even feel them. 
lot of weight. Oh uh, yeah, 30,000 pounds right there. While Jamie lifts the first trailer, Jason and Merv will pull from the rear. Set. Each pull that you do in those big wreckers, you can only do about 50, 60 feet. There was probably four or five different moves in that entire time for my truck alone. It's slow work. Oh, I want my mama. <laughs> yeah. Mm. The rain would pour, and then it would pour heavier and heavier and heavier. I've never seen rain like this in Alberta. Yeah. No, not like this. Oh, I am so freaking cold. Oh, now we got wind. I am soaked head to toe, man. Yeah, so much. Oh, yeah. oh sucks. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm getting soft now because I've been around the desk too much. One of the crew finally takes pity and finds Jamie some rain gear. Better late than never, but I was really thankful to have that rain jacket. It was a pretty wicked night. They've got one trailer up on the edge of the road, but pulling the rest of the B train out backwards will still be a slow process. Lots of winching, resetting, moving, resetting, moving, winching, winching, winching. So Jamie wants to take a shortcut. Why don't we just lift the, the trailer and the tractor back end and just swing it over onto the road. Are you going to pick this up and swing it over? Yeah, well, let's do a lift from right here. I could probably lift. If we back you up a few more feet, you'll get that landing gear yeah, on the I pavement. I'm just going to do this. Boom. And you'll still, like, you'll, it'll just do this. I don't like this. So we're going to try to just lift this up and over here. Bit of a stretch. I'm a little bit out there. But we're just going to try to lift it and bring it out. What do you think? Not good. When that truck and trailer goes in the ditch, all that grain might have moved from the back of the trailer to the front of the trailer. I feel safer with that set of tires on the pavement. I know the rotator can make that lift, and it'll make it all day long. You know, I've done it before. Well, you are lifting straight up. You're not lifting straight up. I don't think that's going to do it. Everybody good? You know, you need to have a conversation between all of us to make that uh, final decision to do that final lift. But Jamie isn't waiting. Is that clear? I'm trying to dance this tractor trailer over back onto the roadway. You're booming up. I'm up. I'm paying attention to the wreck. And I'm not paying attention to the wheels are off the ground. On Highway 1, just west of Hope, B.C., ah! with the wheels of his rotator lifting dangerously high off the ground. Hold it, buddy. We're ripping. Jamie's rigging is failing. That strap's not going to make it. Jamie, no, not good. When you see the rotator start picking up any higher than a couple inches, if something fails, the weak link, chain, strap, cable, anything. It's catastrophic. Thanks to his brother's warning, Jamie has narrowly avoided a disaster. That's life giving you a warning shot over the bow. It's like, hey, buddy, pay attention here. I'm probably a little rusty pushing the envelope. I maybe should be a little more cautious about what I'm doing. OK, let's go, Mer. They got the wheels back on the ground in time. And before he stopped, Jamie managed to move the wreck a few feet. Keep pulling. Putting it in prime position for Merv to pull it out from behind. A little 
little bit by little bit. Two, that's it. One more pull from the front will put the entire B train back on the highway. All right, Jamie, try that much. The main thing is I just persevere through these things and just keep pushing and pushing until we get the right results. Getting the job done is a great thing. Just before 5 a.m., the customer's driver arrives with a backup tractor. Looks good to me. The shipment of grain will arrive on time. Any day of the week, I'd rather be out in the truck doing a job than sitting behind a desk. Simple and plain. The next evening, Jamie's thinking about how expansion has pulled him away from the road. And he wants to talk to a guy who's part of a much leaner operation. It's Jamie. <laughs> Super James. How's it going? I heard you had some coffee on here. Yeah, how you been? Not too bad. Come on, Sam. You know, there's some days I look at Al's operation and I go, hmm, maybe I should get back to that again. That'd be nice. I get away from the truck for two or three days, and you start to get the shakes. You want to get back to it? Yeah. Yeah, you miss it. <laughs> you know, I'm not driving as much now because I seem to be this manager guy that, that I don't really want to be. Yeah. I find myself frustrated. Yeah, I, <laughs> I can understand because I like it simple. I kind of envy him in a way. Why do I need to employ 50 people? Should I employ six, myself and five guys? Uh, take care, James. All right, Al. See you we'll later. See ya. I don't think I'd want to be in his shoes. Definitely not so much. Too much stress. Building on last season's bold move into Alberta. More work for Jamie. We have a jackknife semi in a ditch. Jamie pushed into new territory and a whole new highway. Gosh, you ain't good. It's pretty slick out here today. But managing his growing business and building a new fleet kept Jamie chained to his office. Nobody told you, Jim, there's a rollover at 184th and 16. After losing some of his most trusted crew. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Great. Jamie had to rely on a team of unproven newcomers. You will learn stuff from me. In BC. Oh, be careful. Hold it. And Alberta. <laughs> Last year's rookie. Come on. What could go wrong? Got a big promotion and needed to step up fast. Looks like a war zone. Pressure was too much for some. I'm going. What? What? It's not worth it anymore. But with help from his brothers, sick. Jamie's new team they got Jamie. <laughs> came together. Yeah, that kind of looks shaken up, but that's not going to stop me. One piece at a time, eh? Proving that closure is never an option. Exactly what I wanted it to do. Decent, Jimmy! Decent! Couldn't even have done it better myself, Colin. Yeah, man! Whoa! Yeah! Nice. Thank you. Did you see that? that was Beautiful. Now, Jamie has to decide if his success is worth the price. The one thing that I brought back kind of with my coffee with Al is, you know, really, what is success? Jamie Davis is on route, just going after the three-five split. It's a question that Jamie must answer before winter returns to the mountain. I don't know what the next year will bring for me or the company, but I do know one thing. 
we're going to have some change. And it's coming.